Booger, Miro and Jukes now winning the Grand Royale on the NA East region. Booger is now a two times FNCS champion and a World Cup champion. Jukes is also a two times FNCS champion and Miro is now a four times FNCS champion. This team is full of all-star power, but what is it that actually makes this team work and why have they won the biggest tournament of the year? When looking at their games, an interesting trend showed up is that their early and mid game wasn't actually that good at all. They were frequently below the Storm Surge threshold in a lot of their games, and how they overcame this was a big part of their success. Since they didn't have a great mid game, you can see that in that first game when they get to end game, they were almost 220 below the Storm Surge threshold on the far right hand side, despite being a little uncoordinated at times. This end game ended up being pretty messy, but every single member of this team clutched up so well to gain crucial points. At the back side of the tar, Miro put in critical damage to pick up tons of Storm Surge and actually end up putting them above the threshold, despite the fact that they were 220 below going into this moving zone. He did this solely by himself. He also then took over tarping when necessary and did a great job of cutting off opponent and picking up a knock onto Tabney. Now, unfortunately, he was picked up by a triple spray at this point, but even when Miro made a mistake getting picked up earlier on in the moving zones, he crucially clutched up this game by getting enough Storm Surge damage and even a knock giving them for their points in this match. When he went down, there was 14 teams still remaining, yet this set his teammates up to be able to pop off for the rest of the game. He managed to pop off and clutch up a top four performance out of this, getting 10 more additional thresholds and a ton more placement points and obviously the eliminations to go with it as well. Now, should they have been 200 below the surge at that point? No, they had a poor mid game to set them up there. But just because individually each of this team is so good, they clutched up a top four out of this. Having these storm surge issues is common within top level teams, but they had a way around this, just fight. In game number two, they were already in a poor position with the early and mid game having only 60, 90 and 90 builds across the entire team. However, they heard a fight right next to them and they could take advantage of this and third party for easy refreshes when a lot of the players will be weak. The good thing about this is because each of these players individually is so talented, they're super confident to take these early and mid game fights where other teams wouldn't be. And winning these easily sets them up with capped materials to play later on to the mid game. In this game, they actually did exactly the same thing at fifth zone since they had drained their materials trying to get here, hearing the fights and going off. However, there's some server lag, so you don't really get to see the footage of that. So despite the not best positioning and rotates, they were able to counteract this by just fragging out and easily capitalizing on teams who are fighting. With six eliminations to their name total and cap materials from the refreshes that they got, they basically don't have to be aggressive in the first couple moving zones and just use out all of their materials until they're pretty much out. This is the point where they thrive. Low materials, pumps out and looking to get eliminations. Unfortunately, Miro gets dropped into the box when they're at top seven teams, but Booga and Jukes absolutely pop off and pull their elimination total up to 12 and even clutch up a second. The trend of this game was pretty clear. There was three different times where they used a lot of materials relatively inefficiently, then decided to frag out, which they're really good at. They did it early in the mid game, they did it at the fifth zone, and then they did it at the end game as well. It wasn't clean and calculated like you would see a lot of teams do throughout the entire game, but they relied on their strengths, which was their fragging ability. The problem was when they didn't have an opportunity to do this, they would often struggle with some of the storm surge thresholds. There's not always going to be a team right next to you that you're able to actually fight for a third party or just pick up easy eliminations because this is a top tier lobby, meaning that in some of the games they definitely struggled with storm surge when if they had a better positioning plan, they potentially wouldn't have. Now in game nine, the game that they actually won, they had the exact same strategy to this. They took a fight earlier on, which I couldn't watch because it was entirely server lagged through the whole fight. But this put them 1000 above the storm surge threshold and cap 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 materials. So then they basically just tarped all the way out until they'd run out of materials, which was a top eight in this game. And then once they have nothing, they just frag out in the classic playstyle that they were used to. It's odd that this team doesn't end up getting that many refreshes while they have materials. Mostly they just end up running out and then getting like five extra thresholds because they just frag individually. In this game, that fragging got them the high ground and in a 3v2 situation where they were looking likely to win. However, Booga was one HP and he actually makes a mistake that is falling all the way down on one HP and being picked up to the storm. Now in this situation, you don't want to give the siphon to the other player. However, AV, the player on the low ground, actually gets the siphon from this, so the additional 50 HP, which would help him towards winning the heal off. Now for a lot of teams, this would be a full choke, but because Miro, Booga and Jukes are just so talented individually, Miro easily clutches up the 1v2 to pick up the victory royale. Even in one of the early game fights where Booga goes down to a lobby spray, Jukes cleans up a 1v3 fight, 
and then later reboot Booga, getting him back into the game. This team is so talented individually that even when they make mistakes, they can clutch it up, gain tons of points. And we can see that throughout the tournament, game after game after game. Their teamwork and game plan was far below some of the other players, but they could easily make up for their mistakes with sheer firepower and fragging ability. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot. Peace.